What's going on, AD? What's up, bro? What's up? Dude, I cannot believe this is happening. But first, what is going on, everyone? And welcome to a Houston Texans installment on the roundtable. Shout out to the roundtable for allowing us to come on here and talk about this Houston Texans team. I am joined by my guy, AD, the host of the H-Town Rundown. How's it going, man? Man, it's a beautiful day to be a Houston Texan fan, man. I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm excited. Excited is is an understatement, though. It it kind of feels like this isn't real, you know. And like this happened early in the morning. Breaking news: mm-hmm. the Houston Texans have traded for Bills wide receiver Stephon Diggs, <laughs> and the compensation was the second round pick that you got from the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. A And in return, you received a fifth round pick next year and a sixth round pick this year. Just an absolute fantastic job by general manager Nick Casario, dude. Yeah, yeah. Claps to him. And how do you feel about Stephon Diggs, dude? Man, uh, like you said, it it don't feel real. This is something that the Houston Texans haven't done um, for – Ever since they've been in existence, man, we don't make moves like this. We don't do things like this. It's it's out of character, but in a good way. In a good way, man. The Houston Texans are making moves. They're going all in, pushing all the chips to the table, saying it's you know basically going into season Super Bowl or bust, man. Um, Stephon Diggs, the player, is something we've been needing. Mm-hmm. Um, we've all been talking about, but I know we're gonna talk more about that in in a second, but. Hellified, hellified, hellified move by the Houston Texans, man. I still, I'm still in disbelief, dude. And you know the notion that the Houston Texans are not spenders should be dead, mm-hmm. right? Nick Casario, the he won't get the deal done. He's not a good GM. That should all be put to rest. The work he has done over this off season. I mean, you're talking about bringing is. I saw a stat, AD, and mm-hmm. it said that the Houston Texans are the first team in NFL history <laughs> to bring in a thousand yard wide receiver, a thousand yard running back, and mm-hmm. someone who got double digit sacks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's win now, AD. Man, it is unbelievable. Look, the talent that we pulled in. To replace what we've lost um, in the offseason is just unbelievable. Stacking and stacking players, stacking, you know, talent, man. That, that's something mm-hmm. we've been hoping and praying and what we'll, we'll say, wish for times like this, man. Uh, I pray for times like this. So, I mean, keep it going. Like, if, if you're going to go all in, go all the way in. What do you, you mean know, by that? Hey. Fuck them picks. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. Well, okay. Well, like, who do you want them to go out there and get? I mean, who's available? Hey, I've, it's been a rumor trade, you know, package, but Derrick Brown. Put, mm. put in some phone calls for Derrick Brown, defense tackle, defensive tackle for the Carolina Panthers. 26 years old, you know, looking for a new contract. You know, if you paying digs, you you shelling out this money, giving, mixing a new contract, giving Hunter his money. Mm. Go out, go all in, and you get, you know, Derrick Brown. You literally don't have much else to do it's with the roster. Right. <laughs> just get out there, line them up, lace them up, and play, man. So, so Blue 2 have he says this. I'm going to let you address it, AD. Diggs got traded because he slowed down. It won't be a problem. It seems like after the trade happened, Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs apparently became washed. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Man, it's like an ex-girlfriend. Man, she wasn't that fine anyway. She was all right. <laughs> she was all right. She wasn't that fine. But uh, that, to me, I feel like it's the it's the curse of the Texans. Because mm. whoever we get, it doesn't matter if they're, you know, superstar level, you know, all pro, whatever. Um we always get the the tag of oh they ain't that good they ain't Joe Mixon ain't that I mean we heard it when we signed Joe when we traded for Joe Mixon ah Joe Mixon's cool but he's not all what mm-hmm. y'all think he is um yeah y'all got Hunter but 
you know, it's only for a short-term deal. Eh, he's all right. You know, he's not as good as advertised. If he was, he would have been on another team way before y'all signed him. All of these different excuses. It's the Houston Texas syndrome, and people don't want the Houston, don't want to believe that the Houston Texans are going to be great. Mm. I think they're scared. I think oh, they wish that it was them. Rossi yeah. said, so what's the rundown of the Texans offense? Stroud, Mixon, Diggs, Calling Dale. That's exactly it. And you have a tight end in Dalton Schultz, mm -hmm. an offensive line that hasn't played one game together. And then mm -hmm. we had John McClain uh, on Mean Harley show when he had told us that our <laughs> offensive line coach, Chris Strausser, this was his first time coaching this scheme. Mm -hmm. So we as a whole, as an offense, are going to get better. And, you know, I hate to bring him up again, but he's like, Diggs is not scary anymore. On this offense, yes, he is. Because <laughs> who are you going to double AD, right? I could see a scenario where week one, Diggs goes off for 130. Week mm -hmm. two, Nico goes off for 140. Week mm -hmm. three, it's Tink Dell, and it, it continues and continues. I mean, Hell, one week it'll be all three of them over a hundred. <laughs> like, can you imagine? So, like it's 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 to a point now where it's pick your poison. It's mm. pick your poison, and then you're talking about the offensive line. You're talking about what? If you want to include the picks from the Larry Tunsil trade, you're talking about one, two, three, four first round picks on that offensive line, and a mm -hmm. second round pick on that offensive line with the Larry Tunsil, Titus Howard. You know, potentially Kenyon Green um, and Juice Scruggs and Shaq Mason, like the line isn't a problem when healthy. Um, so if all things go accordingly, like I said, we was one of the most injured um, teams in the league last year. Mm -hmm. So if we can turn that around and, and, and get a full bill of health and be a more healthy team this year, the sky's the limit, man. So, I mean, pick your poison. Everybody, everybody want to talk. Oh, uh, Diggs ain't it. But Diggs is not mm -hmm. our only option. It'll be different if we only had Stefan Diggs. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, oh, he's not as good as he used to be. Okay, then that, that'll be a legitimate argument. But we're not asking Stefan Diggs to come in here and just be solo dolo, you know, dominating. Like, he's going to – like, I don't think Stefan Diggs has played with a Tank Dell or Nico Collins. No. <laughs> like, if you go in Buffalo, I mean, Gabe Davis – Nico Collins is significantly better than Gabe Davis, mm -hmm. <laughs> like ever was and ever will be. Tank Dell, he's never played with a Tank Dell, even in Minnesota. Thielen was closest to it, but Thielen, I mean, Thielen had like what two years, maybe? Then yeah, he two off. really solid years. Yeah, and then he just fell off off a cliff. So I mean, come on. Yeah, man. Uh, like this, like Izzy said, coach Jaguars and Titans are punching the air right now. <laughs> I mean, dude, the reaction to the opposing fan bases, the opposing players was crazy. You had mm -hmm. um, who was it? Christian Kirk said, why are you guys giving up already? You have other players say they got three number one wide receivers. The mm. league, the the league took notice today, A.D. And mm -hmm. I go back to the, you know, I go back to this comment right here. Spending a lot of money while your rookie QB is on the deal is a smart move. Make a huge step for the Texans to be in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Look, we didn't think our window was going to be in year two, but mm -hmm. yet here we are. And I'm glad that Nick Casario and this team realized it and decided to go boss to the walls in this free agency period. And as we are what three weeks away from the NFL draft? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, <laughs> all I can say it was when we made the deal. It was a collective holy shit moment for the mm -hmm. whole league. Because you, if you go on any ESPN, FS1, any of these, you know, national podcasts, every one of them gave the sentiment of. Holy shit. <laughs> like, can you just imagine what the Texans are going to do with – see, here we go again. Titan Hyatt talking about Titan pushing over wash receiver. Okay, that same wash receiver can get work, man. Um, yep. And look, there you go. One corner ain't stopping three guys. Yeah, man. It, dude, I had someone send me 
Stefan Diggs stats against Snead. And look, Snead got the better of him. That's fine. He's an all pro. But let that go. Let me worry about the dude who was eight yards shy away from 1,300. And then mm-hmm. the other dude who, if not hurt, was on pace for a 1,000-yard season and double did the touchdowns. Bro, we haven't even talked about the guy who is going to benefit the most. And mm-hmm. that's fucking Joe Mixon. Yeah. He is not going to see an eight-man box for the next three years <laughs> because-, <laughs> because of how dangerous this offense is going to be, man. Like, when I say, man, it's – and we we talking about it. We you mentioned Dalton Schultz, but Dalton Schultz is going to be an X factor in this offense too, man. You think so? Oh, I know so. Like Dalton Schultz is, he's going to be productive. Just imagine, like if Dalton Schultz just puts up the same numbers he puts up put up this past year, like it's going to be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like CJ Stroud is five thousand yards easy. MVP. MVP easy. Like you know. And then everybody's talking about it. Even the Super Chiefs fans, everybody's saying, okay, hey, it's the Chiefs, maybe Baltimore, then definitely Houston right after. I saw Chiefs, Mm -hmm. Texans, Uh Baltimore. Uh huh. And I'm like, oh, my, I, dude, dude, we haven't even touched the NFL draft. We don't know what the hell Nick Casario <laughs> is going to do. What is going on, UCF Jaguar? He yeah. is the Jaguars part of the round table here, man. Let me know how you feel about yeah. Stephon Diggs being a Houston Texan. <laughs> I know he immediately commented, like, fuck, dude. Yeah, and hey, <laughs> I feel, okay, let I me feel ask you, you Jags fans. I feel for you. What was. Where were right? Where were you when it happened? Me, I, bro, I'm in, at work. Oh my god! I was at work in the office. I had to get up and, and step out. Like I was like, oh no! I not in the middle. Like I literally, when it dropped, I was on a work call. As soon as the work call ended, five minutes, I had to step away and leave the office because I was like, holy! I was like, shit! Yes! Like I was screaming. Like I was like I, I had to go in the hallway, man. It was ridiculous, but I was like, and then I, I didn't do shit the rest of the day at work. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bro, dude, I'm dude, like, so I work from yeah, home, man, right? And I got to clock in, and I got to clock in around uh, no check in around around 10:50. It happened around what 10:45, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, you know, the day's boring at 10 o'clock, right? When I see that dude, I have like a big old cup of tea here. I love Lipton tea. And I go, what the fuck? And I smack it everywhere, right? My poor dog gets the tea all over him. My girlfriend's like, what's going on? And I'm like, we just got Stefan Diggs. And then my roommate from the other, you know, across the hall, I hear him scream, we got Stefan Diggs. <laughs> no, like, dude, like, that, like, this is a home run move. And it's not the first home run move by general manager Nick Casario. I was eating ribs when I saw Daniel Hunter sign. I spit it mm-hmm. out and I was like, dude, what? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> like, look, look, it, Nick Casario is not afraid. If he's proven one thing, he's not afraid of making the big move. Mm-hmm. He did it last year with the Will Anderson trade. You know, that that, that was sexy. Him. That you know, everybody doubted. Hey, I was. Hey, I was hey, hey, you did. You I did. was iffy. I was iffy because you know everybody knows AD was not a huge Will Anderson fan. Hey, but he had one sack in nine weeks, dude. You, you. Yeah. look. I was I was trying not to you know one of my famous hashtags got to be right. I was not trying to trying to two my own horn. I was like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna just let y'all make it. You know, and we'll end up having a good season, but you know. It's still a lot of meat left on the bone. We will, and we mm. gotta see. But no, nah, that that trade was a major move, step in the right direction. Then he signed to Neil Hunter. You know, struck out on um, Saquon. I know Saquon is fucking kicking, throwing a fit right now because he's like, could you imagine Saquon instead of mixing? But you got Saquon with Diggs, dude. <laughs> and I, CJ, like they would have put us above the Chiefs. For sure. So I'm like, I know he's kicking and scratching. I'm like, okay, I hope playing at home was was worth it, brother, because you're going to be missing out on the Super Bowl because 
with this roster the way it is and what the Texans are doing, I mean, hell, if they add, you know, if they let's say they do trade for Brown, and then they still add a, a Sweat or Edgerin Cooper or, you know, a Rankin Straw from cornerback or just, mm-hmm. you know, and they sign Xavier Howard eventually. Ooh. Like, you talking about – Hold on, let me say this because I'm, I'm getting ahead. caught up. I'm getting, I'm too excited. I'm getting caught up. Go ahead. I said, I said, it, I said this earlier. C.J. Stroud is entering his LeBron in Miami phase for the Houston Texans. Hold up, <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, <laughs> I'm going to bring this man to the stage. I've known him from 12 plus years. He reigns. From parts unknown, standing at seven feet, 380 pounds. You can see him on YouTube. Just type in the lead underscore Houston. It'll pop right up. Harley, my guy. Welcome. Hey. Hey, what's going on, everybody? All right. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. Stefan Diggs, how we feeling? Uh, fantastic. Uh, already dropped a video a few hours ago of it. Um this is just an awesome move, right? It's just helpful for everybody. Um, it helps offensively. It helps defensively. Opposing defenses are going to have to adjust immensely now for this. This Houston Texans offense really was just running it back uh, just with Joe Mixon and continuity. Those were the two, thing, two things you were pretty much going for as a Texans fan. Okay, we got continuity. We got a good running game, it feels like now, with Joe Mixon. Add some depth behind them. Just a little... You know, unsure with Damian Pierce overall, but end of the day, Mixon has improved in Devin Singletary. Um, but Stephon Diggs is just somebody that opposing defenses now, you know, it's a name that opposing defenses obviously are going to get attracted to. Yes, Nico Collins and Tank Dell is no disrespect to them whatsoever. They're fantastic as a one two punch. Um, and opposing defenses were going to have to adjust to them as well but now you add in an extra wrinkle in Stefan Diggs who as we know is a top 10 wide receiver in this league and has been doing it for quite some time biggest mm-hmm. reasons maybe that you didn't want a Stefan Diggs maybe some of the extra baggage maybe some of the the labeled diva issues that was thrown around you know okay I understood it. It was something that I had expressed as, hey, you know, it's nothing football wise, though. Mm. You know, everything on the field Mm. is elite. This man, the Miko Ryan said it way back then. They wanted a true separator at the wide receiver position. It don't get much better than Stephon Diggs, who is an elite separator in terms of route running and everything else. The statistics back it up as well. This Houston Texans team. Uh, With the addition of Stephon Diggs, I said it in my video, to me, automatically catapulted them. They were already out of the rebuild label. It catapulted them all the way into actual Super Bowl contention, Mm. like legit Mm. conversation. You were flirting with it. You were the little trendy Super Bowl pick in amongst national media. Oh, look, it's the it's the new girl on the in, in the school, you know. And we're hey, in man. the graphic. We're finally <laughs> in the graphic. Yeah, like because and I just did a video and I'm gonna be editing it for tomorrow. Um, but there's a video all the way back from Nick Wright when uh and I I'm I'm, I'm forgetting the name of his show now, but whatever. Uh, it's on Fox Sports One, him and Chris Broussard. Um Oh, they were talking big mess today about uh about uh, uh digs getting to the first text. things first is the name. First things first. There we go. I, I I don't know. I think I said something wrong on that video, but I it's all right. Um, this was all the way back in February twenty third. It was just like a few weeks after the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and they asked who is the you know anybody that can be in direct contention for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's the goal right now. Okay, mm-hmm. the the Chiefs are the barometer, yep. and it's can you. You know, can you compete with them? You know, and it reminded me of, man, it feels like the Golden State Warriors. And the only team that decided to compete with them was the Houston Rockets with Daryl Morey. Was not afraid. He was not afraid. He went out, swing for the fences, combined the Chris Ball and and had a bunch of other pieces that went with it, especially really, really good uh, defenses. So, um, you know, he improved the team so much to – 
when you look back at it, you're really just a two games away from actually completing and slaughtering the Golden State Warriors in six games. If Chris Paul was healthy, that would have been a fun story to talk about. When you go put this into the Texans' perspective, oh, okay, you go from February 23rd all the way from now. Nick Wright mentioned that they can be similar to the Cincinnati Bengals year two, Mm -hmm. that they need to improve the defense Mm -hmm. and get defensive signings. Huh, interesting, did that. Um, they have great continuity between bringing back everyone. Oh, yep. Yep. Got that as well, too. All right, cool. What else do we need? You know, like the Texans have the five pillars of, in my opinion, NFL foundational success. Mm -hmm. The five Mm -hmm. pillars are what you got the quarterback. It's CJ Stroud. You got the Miko Ryans. He's the head coach. Okay. Oh, oh, that was to the rest of the AFC. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You got the left tackle, or however much you want to argue about Laramie Tunsil. At the end of the day, that man is a top five left tackle in football. So Mm. however you want to slice it and whatever the opinion is. Defensive end, Will Anderson. You got two. Mm -hmm. Cornerback, Derek Stingley Jr. Those are your, you know, those are the foundational success points in the NFL. And those are the success points that help create an NFL I don't want to say dynasty, but a really good team. You Mm -hmm. know, those are really good points to move forward with. And so I'm excited, man. I know I did a lot of talking right there, but it's for a good reason. And it's because, damn it, the Houston Texans are scary right now. Very scary. Scary and it's hard not to – it's hard not to think Super Bowl. It's hard Mm -hmm. not to think this team can go on a run. AD, I'm going to start with you, and I'm going to go back to this comment by Mr. Jalen Johnson. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit concerned with the diva issues, but I'm sure D'Amico and CJ can keep him in track. So this is exactly what Harley was saying. When you talk about Mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs, it's not about the play on the field. It's about the play off the field. We know he can stay healthy. We just know sometimes he'll throw a a temper tantrum on the Mm -hmm. sideline. He'll post a cryptic Instagram, uh, you know, picture with the crazy outfit. So what do you think about that? Um, I think it was always overblown. Um, I look at I look at the situation. I say it all the time. If one player can come in, come in and destroy your chemistry or disrupt your chemistry to the point of no return, then your foundation and your culture wasn't great to begin with. I look at Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota's been you know a clusterfuck ever since they. You know, I think what was I forgot the defensive coordinator that was the head coach for uh, forever. What was his name? Do y'all remember? Sure. Um, the old sure. DC in Minnesota. Well, he was um, a DC in Dallas. Yeah, Leslie Frazier, right? No, no, no. Uh, he was Mike the head Zimmer. Coach. Uh, Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer for years, and then you backdoor with, you know, now you got O'Connell, but Zimmer was there when Diggs was there. I don't mm. consider that stable. And then you go to Buffalo with McDermott. McDermott hasn't had control of that franchise since he arrived. It's, it's been loops and hoops and all kind of drama throughout that franchise since he's been there. So that culture wasn't set there. You have you go into Houston where you got C.J. Stroud, who's respected by his peers, by the league. You know, everybody knows C.J. is a man, you know, a man's man. You're not going to punk C.J., Prove that in the game against the Broncos. You're not going. You're not going to sit up here and punk CJ. You're not going to talk shit to CJ, and he's not going for him not to respond. And D'Amico is the ultimate, ultimate respect guy. Like mm. you walk, if you walk in a locker room, it's immediate respect to D'Amico Ryan's. So that never was a concern for me as far as anybody outside. Because I remember way back when we were talking about AJ Brown and all these other guys, and that was always a concern. One thing we don't realize is that Stefan Diggs loves Houston, first and foremost. Mm. Secondly, he's cool, extremely cool with CJ, and extremely cool with Tank Dell. And you walking into a situation where you know this team, this Texans team, is a playoff, you know, perennial playoff team now with CJ Stroud as your quarterback. I'm coming in where I have to do less. Mm-hmm. And I said it earlier, Harley, with Ruben, everywhere he's been, he's had to be the guy. 
you can't tell me, you know, who was the legitimate number two in Buff in Buffalo that was better than Tank Dell and Nico Collins. Mm. You can't tell me who, you know, we talked about Adam Thielen in, in Minnesota, but I mean, like at this point, Nico Collins and Tank Dell are a better group of receivers than he's ever played with. So he has, he's coming in a situation where he has, he can do less and produce more. Mm. And so that to me, I think, you know, and I said it before, right before you got on too, CJ Stroud is the LeBron of Miami Heat right now. Everybody wants to come play for Houston now. You're going to have – it's going to be the the Monstars or whatever of, of the NFL on the Houston Texan team because everybody's going let to – let us win a Super Bowl. Let us win mm. a Super Bowl with C.J. Stroud. And it's, it's just going to multiply times 10. Mm. Harley, I go to you and, you know, ask you a two-parter here. Thoughts on the compensation from the Stephon Diggs trade? You know, so once again, we gave them next year's second round pick that we got from the Minnesota Vikings from trading back. They uh, We received a next year's fifth, I believe, in this year's sixth. And then the second one is we heard conversations about where the Houston Texans rank now. I saw it was on ESPN today. They put us right below the Chiefs, right in front of Baltimore. Where do you think this Houston Texan ranks and fits right now? Yeah, to answer the first one real quickly, um, I was really liking that second round pick next year in 2025. I, I, I thought it was going to be like damn near right by the first round, end of the first round. Yeah, yeah, just because Minnesota at the moment doesn't really have a quarterback. I don't know what they're doing in mind. Uh, I, all the rumors just seem like J.J. McCarthy is going to be the Minnesota Vikings quarterback. And, you know, that was like piquing my interest like, huh. They're going to go with J.J. McCarthy, huh? I'm intrigued. You know, like I'm interested, you know, because I'm not completely sold on a J.J. McCarthy. There's things to this game that I like, but ultimately it's not something where I'm going, oh, okay, yeah, this is a guy that can, you know, Mm -hmm. transform it. Now, who knows with Kevin O'Connell there as head coach, you know, maybe young quarterback, maybe new scheme, all this stuff. Hey, maybe it works out, but who knows? So, yeah, I was kind of interested in it, but. Me and you, Ruben, we both said this on the on another podcast, in, uh, and I forgot where now. I'm escaping my head. But, you know, it was talking about, are we done in free agency? And it just mm-hmm. felt like we weren't done. Mm-hmm. Felt like there was, and this was before we freed up the $10 million from Titus Howard. Like, there felt like there was another move that was going to happen, you know? But it started to be like, and eh, maybe, maybe there's just too much smoke. You know, maybe they just they're just nothing grilling. You know, maybe it was just too much smoke. They ain't nothing grilling. Who knows? You know, and 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 you know, that comment was just funny. You know, Jags might sweep the Texans. You know, I mean uh you I mean, every, away there, from there's, sweeping them. <laughs> there, there's a lot of if ands and buts, you know, and you know, so I mean the Texans almost swept the Jags last year with a backup kicker. Um mm-hmm. so I mean, what makes me believe that they can't sweep the Jags this year and the Texans got better and the Jaguars got about the same? Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know what that brings me to. But let's get back into it. The compensation, I don't mind. you giving up a second-round pick. Um, you moved down a few spots. You gained some other extra picks in day three. I don't. I mean, th- this is a pretty good, solid move for Nick Casario. Nothing to go crazy about. Um, nothing to overreact about. So I enjoy it. Um, and then <laughs> you talked about where do we get placed in, in mm-hmm. terms of the rankings of the AFC. And it's funny you say that. I mean, I, I talked about it in the video. I thought it slingshotted us straight to direct eyesight of the Kansas city chiefs. Cause we're, we're looking at them right now. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I like on, on page, on paper, everything. Like we're looking at this Kansas city chiefs team going, huh? Oh, y'all want that three P huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, because when I'm looking at this overall, Buffalo Bills just got worse by giving away Stefan Diggs. They got to have a plan or something. You know, they got to have something because not only did they lose Diggs, but they also lose Gabe Davis. Now, I like Curtis Samuel. I think that's an upgrade, to be honest, over Gabe yeah. Davis. Gabe Davis don't do a lot for me. Um, So, Jags fans that are talking. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Gabe Davis. Welcome to eight <laughs> games straight of... There's a two catch game here and there with 140 yards and a tutty. Wow, mm. awesome. Um, 
And then, like, there's six games where he'll be absolutely quiet. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be that other game, though, where he has four catches, like 180 yards and two touchdowns. And then the rest of the time, he's going to be absolutely quiet. Um, This was with Josh Allen, by the way. Um, He's going to uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars team where Trevor Lawrence isn't as good as Josh Allen. And that's not even to be disrespectful. That's just the truth. Like, no offense. (laughs) Josh Allen's a really damn good quarterback. <laughs> and so um Finally trying to piss I, people off. <laughs> all right, he's trying to get the whole he's trying to get the whole. Oh, I don't give a damn, damn bro. Right. Like I, I don't see what the Jaguars did. They about stayed the same for me, you know. And when you look at the whole division, like who else? The only team really besides us, I mean, it's really gonna be dependent on quarterback play, right? That's the that's the easiest crutch answer. You know, if Trevor Lawrence ends up taking another step that he should be, then we can be having a different conversation. But I can only judge from what I've seen so far. Mm. I can only see, How many steps know? does he have to take? Because I thought the generational yeah. prospect was supposed to be there already. Like, there we go. Like, so, that you know, that's, that's what I'm trying to find out, too, because, I mean, this guy was labeled across national media that, hey, this guy's supposed to be the next generational prospect. And I'm looking at it like, oh, OK, so well, He's been drafted here, and the Houston Texans have been absolutely doo doo, <laughs> you know, for the past few years. And they just already not only caught up to them, but surpassed them like mm. that. I mean, the rest of this division, now I look at the Colts, the big thing with the Colts, I think the Colts can have a massive improvement next year. The only reason is going to be, however, Anthony Richardson takes those next steps as quarterback for them. You know, that's, that's very. They're very reliant on him. They they really, to me, dropped the ball and opportunity to improve their team this offseason, similar to the Texans. I thought they could have, you know, really just dove two feet in. That's what I'm looking at the Titans. I'm going, look, you can have your opinions of Will Levis or whatever, but this team fully believes that this man is their quarterback. Mm-hmm. And if I'm a fan, I like it. Because they've been aggressive, they've taken chances, regardless of however the moves, whether it's an overpay, whether it's not, is what it is. They're on their team. Like, you know, it, I mean, that we can say Eric Armstead to overpay for the Jaguars. Who cares? We got to face them against them in the <laughs> D-line. Like, that don't mean, overpay don't mean nothing in the trenches, you know. Mm-hmm. So the Titans, I thought, have improved their team. Um, I like what they've done, but it's all going to be on – is Will Levis going to be the answer for this team? Mm, I mean, in my bad. opinion, I don't know. I don't really have a lot of faith, you know, but new coach, new scheme, some new players. Who's Who knows? We'll see. Thank you for the $2 uh, super chat. It's me, bitch. Us. He said, let's go, Jets. We are getting invaded by the AFC East <laughs> round table. But listen, you bastards. I know we play you this year. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going O for 4. We're smacking two of these nuts. We're making sure that the New England Patriots never try to revive their dynasty. We are smacking the Las Vegas Raiders. Dude, we, and then the Bills. Don't even get me started. Stephon Diggs is going to have 250 on you guys in three touchdowns. <laughs> the AFC East, dude, they're garbage. They had their moment to take over. And just no one did absolute travesty. That is a horrible. Oh, thank you for the other $2. Go Bills, baby. Is he sending some love? We got another one. 199 <laughs> I could worship too. Uh, he said, fins up. Mm. I'm declaring war. On the AFC East. Hey. In the words of Roman Reigns, I'm about to smash him. I'm about to smash him, man. <laughs> you, Paul. I don't see what the AFC East does for me. I mean, I thought the Dolphins would do pretty well, but it just seems like they're not. There's something wrong with the Dolphins, it feels like, right? Like, they got Tua, they got Tyreek they got Hill, they got all these nice hit, weapons. Hit dabs on the sideline, bro. That's the that's the I mean, reason why. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just I, a little odd, you know. Can they I, got can a I lot of talent you know, on that team for me to just be like, man, they don't really scare me. <laughs> can I break down <laughs> you know? the, the division quarterbacks real quick? Um, you got one quarterback in Indy who wants to be a rapper more than he wants to be a quarterback. Um <laughs> 
you got you got the fake generational prospect who is is screaming bust every year that it continues. Um, and then you got a quarterback who has is talented as hell in in Tennessee, mm. but he's mentally he's you know not all the way there and um he does a lot of dumb shit and i don't think you can josh allen proved you can't you know unless you got a guru they're gonna continue to do the dumb shit so um yeah he's gonna always be a hindrance but i mean hey we got you know cj almighty in houston so I, i think we got the advantage you know no, dude, one 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 hundred percent. Like I've, I mean, obviously, we're feeling good about what this team has done because, to be honest with you guys, it's like we've never seen this, and we've always been saying this is the team to never make the move. This is the same old Houston Texans. That narrative is done. That narrative should be put to rest. It's time to start winning games. It's time to start having big playoff runs and getting as close you can to the Lombardi Trophy. Harley, what is left for this Houston Texans team? What do they need to do to just get one step closer, 1% better? Obviously, the team's not finished Um, in terms of just – I'm not saying move-making, just like roster-wise. There's still some holes to this team, Um, specifically the safety position. I think that's something that's a growing conversation that's going to grow more and more amongst that social media and Texans uh, and Texans Twitter and whatever, but the safety market specifically is where in the secondary in general, in my opinion, you know, as much as I talked about, you know, Derek Stingley Jr. Um, and the rest of this secondary isn't anything you're scared of mm. uh, just because Derek Stingley, their ability is his biggest issue, right? Mm-hmm. We already know that. So, when it comes to durability, that's always been his issue. It's never been about ability. It's always about his durability. Um, Derek Stingley, when healthy, is a top 10 cornerback in this league. He plays like that. He can argue that he plays like a top five quarter cornerback in this league. That's how good he is. But mm-hmm. the dude's got to stay healthy, and we got to see it happen. Like We got to see health. That's exactly what we got to see. Mm-hmm. Moving on from him, though, Jeff Okuda, I mean, he's had his serious injury. He's had some injury concerns in the past as well. It's DJ Henderson. I, I don't know what else to really grab from there. I like these signings. Don't get me wrong. I like the potential that both of these guys have. Um, but we got to we gotta look at this 100. Like, hey, both of these guys got some injury concerns. And can the Texans actually, like, make something out of these guys? Mm-hmm. You know, which I believe in D'Amico. I've seen the 49ers, you know, go with this philosophy of getting some – whether it's albeit older corners that have had success in the past and they've somehow figured out a way to get the best out of their performance. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we saw a little bit of it with this random dude named DeAndre Houston Carson, who was just, just came out of nowhere as your safety last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, here you go off the practice squad into the Texans starting safety room. And he actually played half decent. You know, you got the best out of DeAndre Houston Carson last year. Mm -hmm. So as long as health is a good thing for you, you know, it should be helpful for an Akuda or even a C.J. Henderson maybe. Um, The safeties, though, Jalen Petrie, Jimmy Ward, that's always the one where I go, Mm -hmm. all right, this is a tough conversation. Because something needs to happen, right? And Jalen Petrie – we would love for him to get back to that rookie year performance where, and it's not just the tackles and whatnot. The tackles were inflated, but he had a lot of great awareness around the football. Mm -hmm. And that's something we did not see last year because two years ago, he was making plays on the ball. He was attacking. Uh, He was always around the ball. It seemed like two years ago, he was always around to play. So, (laughs) so I, Though he's definitely somebody that has to get back to that rookie year performance. And then Jimmy Ward injuries. Um, I don't think the Texans are gonna be getting rid of him. I think D'Amico Ryan's really likes him. I, mm-hmm. I, I really do. I think that's just yep. my 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 take on it. I think he just likes him, you know. And I would kept going 
why would they get rid of Jimmy Ward when I continue to see him like being tweeted amongst like Ari Alexander from Channel Two having conversations with him, and he's getting tweeted a lot from a lot of the other local media guys. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel like a guy that's going to get cut. So it feels like this is someone they're going to be moving forward with long term. Um, I would love to bring in a Quandre Diggs or a Justin Simmons. You have you know, some money left to do this. Like, so that's where I'm looking at specifically the safety. There's obviously some other holes in this team. You can maybe still go after interior D line. Um, you can maybe, wow. Is that really it? Interior D line and secondary. That's, it. that's <laughs> it for me. Like, like when I look at the offense, huh. it's all set. Felt <laughs> like more. Defense, it's right. The front four is will Khalil Davis. Yeah. Maybe. Danico Archery Hunter. Then you got yep. Christian Harris, Aziz Alshair, your two cornerbacks, Derek Stingley, CJ Henderson, or Jeff Okuda. And then your two safeties, right? After not seeing any movement in the safety group, right? We would have thought that saving $5 million is something the Houston Texans would have wanted to do by cutting Jimmy Ward. However, mm -hmm. like Harley just said, it seems like he's going to be here for the next year. So to me, the only needs for this Houston Texans team is another defensive tackle, maybe a backup running back, and some help in the secondary. What do you think, AD? I totally agree. Um, I do think I see the comment in there about the linebacker position. That is something that needs to be addressed um, because it seems like injuries hit the linebacker position for the Texans every year. Um, and it's been that way for like the last five years, seem like. So definitely need another, you know, piece in that linebacking room. Um, and I'm not, you know, people know I'm not sold on Henry nor Noah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> neither him or Jake Hansen um, give me any kind of positive vibes when they come in the game. But um, definitely defensive tackle. I think I talked about it too. They, they going all in. Pick up the phone to call Carolina about Derrick Brown. Um, mm. You trade for Derrick Brown. If they make one of these two moves, like Carla said, if they sign Justin Simmons or trade for Derrick Brown, I mean, it's just – it takes – to me, it takes it over the top. It kind of feels unfair. Top. Yeah, and, and to be honest, and I mean, think about it. We talk about Xavier Howard as well. Um. He's older, but he can be a solid number two cornerback for the Houston Texans. You know, you you have your stars at every position, and we'll accept safety. Mm -hmm. You have your star corner, Derek Singley. Whoever you bring in, whether you draft or sign in free agency, nobody's taking that away from Singley. Whoever you draft or sign in linebacker is not taking away Christian Harris. You know, we signed um, Daniel Hunter. It's still Will Anderson show, you know. So you and defensive tackle is the only position right now. And we added guys in Fadakoski yeah. and Tim Settle, who are really, really good players and young. Both of mm. them, I think, are twenty six years old. So you bringing in young, younger guys at the defensive tackle spot who are who really are productive. Um, so if they sign a guy or draft a guy defensive tackle, which they're going to do one of the two, they're going to do one of the two and then add linebacker depth. I think you're pretty much said, Ruben, you did also mention backup running back. I think we draft one for sure. Give me for Jaden sure. Wright. Give me Jaden Man. Wright. Just, just, Man. just give me that speed. <laughs> Let's not play that. Sir. Let's go to <laughs> Super Bowl. Let's do it. And if you want to before play fair, me, nah, <laughs> I'm tired of doing that. I'm tired of waiting. And I'm going to go back to this yeah. comment right here. I think the three of you are in for a wake-up call. If you're putting CJ Stroud in the Hall of Fame after one season, you're in trouble. I've seen this show before too many times. Name me one. Name me someone who went out there and wins offensive rookie of the year without his offensive line starting one game together, with Tank Dell being injured, with Nico Collins missing time, with Noah Brown being out for the season, a first-time offensive coordinator. 
you guys are in for the rude awakening. And for anyone who thinks the Fawn Diggs will be the number one option for the Houston Texans, you are <laughs> solely mistaken. This is going to be a pick your poison offense. And when mm -hmm. you think you have the pass locked up, you're going to see Joe Mixon just dice you up on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, everyone, for being a part of today's special episode of Houston Texans football on the Roundtable Network. Do me a favor, guys. Before you all go, please like this, comment, and subscribe to the Roundtable channel. Hopefully, we get to do a couple of more of these. Before we go, I'll start with you, AD. Let them know where they can find your latest work. Hey, you can find me on the H-Town Rundown on YouTube and as well as at the H-Town Rundown on Twitter or X and at um, Bully60, B-O-L-E-Y-6-0. On X as well, we do have an Instagram account, the H-Town Rundown Podcast as well. Check us out there. Um, yeah, look, check us out in a, in a few, man. We, we got another pod running. It's it's that day, man. We don't stop. To make big moves. It's nonstop. So check mm -hmm. us out at, at 830, man, on on YouTube as well. Harley, where can they find you at? Yeah, uh, you can find me at the lead underscore Houston anywhere on social media. Uh, we're on the road to 8,000 subscribers. So, you know, make sure y'all are subscribed. I give out as much as I can. Uh, lots of Texans content, Astros, Rockets, news, rumors, updates. I try to keep it fun. I try to have a laugh here and there. My shorts are real, just all memes. I, I, I'm just a down to earth dude. Just drop a meme as a short. People laugh. Everyone laughs. We make fun of some teams. We know how to dish some trash talk. We know how to take it, too. So, hey, it is what it is. We have some fun. We have a lot of fun. So, uh, again, super appreciative of having the opportunity to be on here on the round table here. So having a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of good stuff coming up in the future. Yeah, absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, thank you all for being a part of this stream, whether where you're a fan of the Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans, Indianapolis, Coach Jacksonville Jaguars. Do me a favor, guys. Have a real blessed rest of y'all day. Peace.